Nine soldiers from Fort Campbell's 101st Airborne lost their lives last night during a Black Hawk training exercise in which two helicopters crashed close to the Fort Campbell Army base. Let's listen to the details. Overnight, two U.S. Black Hawk helicopters crashed during a military training incident about 40 miles away from Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Officials say crew members from the 101st Airborne Division were flying two HH-60 Black Hawk choppers during a routine training mission when the crash happened around 10 last night. Governor Andy Bashir tweeting overnight that fatalities from the incident are expected, writing, we've got some tough news out of Fort Campbell with early reports of a helicopter crash. Please pray for all those affected. The crash occurred in a field, some wooded area, but primarily a field area. Troopers responded to the area and came across the wreckage of two military Blackhawks. One witness says a chopper seemed to be flying out of the ordinary before they crashed, lighting up an entire tree line. Two helicopters just disappeared out of the sky and there was a large flash. And we ran outside and we started seeing um, Another helicopter that circled that area where I thought the impact was uh, for probably 30 minutes. And then we saw ambulances uh, and sirens. Fort Campbell releasing a statement saying the status of the crew members are unknown at this time. The command is currently focused on caring for the service members and their families. This incident comes just weeks after a Black Hawk helicopter from the Tennessee National Guard crashed in Alabama killing two crew members. Now, Fort Campbell officials are pretty tight-lipped about releasing any new information at this time, but do plan on providing an update later on this morning. Weather conditions at the time of this crash reportedly calm with very little wind and clear visibility. Now, here is the latest update from Fort Campbell officials and Governor Bashir. For being here. I would like to provide a summary of the training accident that occurred last night involving aircraft from the 101st Airborne Division. At approximately 10 p.m. last night, two of our Black Hawk helicopters were involved in a crash during a planned training flight in Cadiz, Kentucky, that resulted in the death of all nine service members aboard the aircraft. On behalf of Major General McGee and Command Sergeant Major Knapp, who are currently deployed to Southeast Europe, I would like to express our deepest sympathies to the families of our fallen soldiers. We are currently in the process of notifying their families. Until these notifications are complete, we are unable to provide specific details about our soldiers. We appreciate your patience and respect of the process, and we will provide additional details once all family members are notified. I would like to thank the first responders from Trigg County and the Kentucky State Police for the rapid and professional response and for their continued support. The Army has deployed an aircraft safety team from Fort Rucker, Alabama, who will arrive later today and will immediately initiate an investigation to help us understand what caused this crash in order to prevent accidents like this from happening again. This is a truly tragic loss for our families, our division, and Fort Campbell. And our number one priority is caring for the families and the soldiers within our Combat Aviation Brigade. Our entire Fort Campbell community is surging resources in support, and our thoughts and prayers are with these families and these soldiers during this difficult time. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Bashir would like to deliver some short remarks. Good morning. Today is a tough and a tragic day for Kentucky, for the Fort Campbell, and for the 101st. The nine individuals we lost are children of God. They will be mourned and missed by their families, by their communities. We are blessed to live in the freest country in the history of planet Earth, but we must remember that that freedom relies on those who are willing to serve some of which pay the ultimate price. We know a lot about loss in Kentucky, especially these last three years. We're gonna do what we always do. We're gonna wrap our arms around these families and we're gonna be there with them, not just for the days, but the weeks and the months and the years to come. 
We're going to let them know that they are loved, they are special, and if they'll allow us to carry some of their grief, we'll do that for as long as we can. My faith teaches me that while, while the body is mortal, the soul is eternal, and we will see them again. This morning, I talked to Governor Bill Lee, who expressed his grief for this loss and his similar commitment to these families. There are no state lines when it comes to taking care of these families and helping them with their grief. Finally, I also want to thank the first responders who came from the entire region. Uh, they're on the ground immediately uh, after this incident, doing everything that they could. The first responders included the Kentucky State Police, Trigg County Emergency Management, Trigg and Christian County Sheriff's Offices, Trigg and Marshall County Rescue Squads, East Golden Pond and other Trigg County Fire Departments, Trigg County EMS, and the Christian County Emergency Management. As in here in Kentucky and I know in Tennessee, we love Fort Campbell. We love all the people that live here and that work here. They are part of our community of who we are. Their loss today is our loss. And we're going to stand with both those that are here today. And again, we're going to make sure that these families know that they are loved and that they are not alone. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm prepared to answer your questions. Yes, ma'am. What does this training entail? What kind of training? Yes, ma'am. This was a training progression, and specifically, they were flying a multi ship formation, two ships under night vision goggles at night. Yes, sir. Michael Ward with uh, Channel 4 out of Nashville. Uh, for folks unfamiliar with the training exercises, um, is it typical to have that many people on a helicopter? Was it five and four? Or uh, how many were on each helicopter? And is it typical to have that many on a, on a helicopter in that sort of training exercise? Yes, sir. It was five and four, and that is fairly typical. There's a pilot, a co-pilot, a crew chief, and then often you'll have medics or other personnel uh, on the aircraft as well. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Jacqueline with ABC News. Do you have any, or can you shed some insight onto the conditions perhaps leading up to the crash? Or do you have any insight into what caused this crash? Um, we have the, a, a safety team coming from Fort Rucker, Alabama, who specialize in aircraft safety and specifically these investigations. We hope to have them on the ground sometime later today. Uh, and they're bringing a very diverse and talented team that will look at every possible contributing factor. And I think um, in, in a short time, we will have a much better understanding of what may have contributed to, the, to this accident. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, thank you. They were all based at Fort Campbell in the 101st Airborne Division. Yes, ma'am. Hi, this is Alex with the CBS National News. I wanted to know a little bit more about the uh, helicopters that were in, in play here. Can you just give us a little bit of background on what they are for and what they do? Yes, ma'am. They were a variant of the Blackhawk. Um, in this specific, these specific aircraft were a medical evacuation aircraft. However, uh, we believe that they were um, the accident occurred when they were doing flying, not deliberate medical evacu evacuation drills. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, at this point, we don't know. Uh, we, we're hopeful that when we get the team from Fort Rucker here and they're able to um, pull some of the data out of the onboard computers that we'll have a better understanding of exactly what happened. Yes, ma'am. Was there any sort of signal at radio and for help or anything like that for this was happening? No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Describe the location as to where the crash happened. Was it in any proximity to West and Yes, ma'am. Despite our losses, uh, we were lucky because they were able to land uh, in an open field across from a residential area. So thankfully, there were no additional casualties or injuries um, as a result of the aircraft crash.
Yes, sir. Jerry with ABC out of Nashville. Are these helicopters you talked about uh, getting data from them, do, are they equipped with like a black box like we hear when passenger planes go down, or is it more just computer? type instruments that you would look at? Yes, sir. They do have something very similar to the black boxes that, that we see on the larger aircraft, uh, and, and we're hopeful that that will provide quite a bit of information of what, what occurred. Yes, ma'am. Um, Jordan Whalen, 44 News. When do you expect to reach out to the families to release those names? Yes, ma'am. We, we um, started next of kin notification early this morning. Uh, we have some family members that are in the local area that we were able to contact fairly quickly, but we also have some family members across the United States and a few outside of the United States. So that pro process is ongoing. Um, we're, we're doing everything we can to notify families as quickly as we can, but I don't have a good estimation on when the final notifications will occur. Yes, ma'am. Sir. Uh, Edward Marlow, WKDC. Uh, do you happen to have any sort of an estimate as to the rapid response time that's been talked about a lot? Is there an average time of which Fort Campbell and Trick County and Christian County were able to respond? Yeah, I don't have an actual response time, but I will tell you that we know that um, they responded incredibly quickly and um, immediately established communication with our leadership here at Fort Campbell. And then jointly, we were able to um, secure that location and get the right folks there to start um, helping um, at, at the site. Yes, ma'am. Um, were there any transports to medical facilities nearby or were all the soldiers in No, ma'am, there were no transports off the crash site. Yes, sir. Um, how, were, how was the post made aware of the crash? Were they, were, were they being monitored by radar? Was there radio communication or was it people in the area that called 911? Yes, we, we had a, other aircraft in the vicinity, so we were actually notified via multiple means. One was by the Trigg County um, re first responders was, was one of the calls, and then we also had aircraft that were able to quickly move to that location uh, and actually stayed overhead for quite some time. We'll take two more questions. Yes, ma'am. Cindy Snow with Fox 17 in Nashville. When, to your knowledge, or ever, did something like this happen here at Fort Campbell during a training exercise? Um, that I will have to follow up with you. I'm not sure of the actual date of the last accident, especially to this extent, but I can follow up with you after this with an answer. Yes, ma'am. Um, going forward, how will you take extra safety precautions to ensure that this doesn't happen again? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Everything we do, um, safety is integrated into this. And uh, for context, when we do any training, but especially aviation training, they do very, very detailed planning, very detailed rehearsals. Depending on the risk of the operation they're doing has different levels of approval from the command. Um, so we will always relook our safety precautions and our measures. Um, but this was, uh, like all of these training events, um, safety is a primary focus for us.